Okay, so when we talked about free fall, we really ignored something that's actually pretty important. We said that when things fall in a vacuum, they accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Okay, and that's true in a vacuum, but really we don't live in a vacuum. Okay, and so this, the acceleration of a falling object changes depending actually on how fast something's going. And this is actually pretty tricky because that means that the, the rate, the upward force that something experiences from drag changes depending on its velocity. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it's balancing out the downward force of gravity. And at that point, something falls at a constant speed or at terminal velocity. Okay? At terminal velocity, the acceleration is actually equal to zero. Okay, so where this gets tricky though is when we try to find the actual acceleration of an object because let's, one of the general equations used here is that the drag force, Fd, is going to be something like B times V. Okay, <clears throat> and there's some drag forces that vary with respect to velocity and there's some that actually vary with respect to velocity squared. Generally, it's a combination of the two. But for this, we're going to say it varies according, linearly according to the velocity. So as it increases speed, so does the amount of force from drag. And this B value is some constant, depending on the shape of the object, the density of the air, and things like that. Okay? So what happens here, though, is we'll write a net force equation, say that MA, we'll say that down is positive, is equal to our downward gravitational force minus this upward force, okay? And so to solve this for A, we see that A is equal to G, we'll divide by M, minus B over M times V. <clears throat> so this value for A is changing depending on what V is equal to, okay? Well, one thing we can do is we can find out, well, what terminal velocity is because that's when A is equal to zero. If A is equal to zero, then G minus BV over M is equal to zero. And so if we solve this for V, or terminal velocity, we're going to get that terminal velocity is equal to G times M over B, where B represents, again, some constant depending on the shape of the object, the mass of the object, and the density of the air. And so this is the fastest so that that object can fall, okay? But we also want to find, let's say, maybe acceleration with respect to time. We'll believe that we need to know what the velocity is with respect to time, okay? And we know that we can get velocity by integrating because A is equal to dV dt. And so we'll replace A with dV dt, okay? But we can't just integrate this because we have a problem. And the problem is that the change in velocity is dependent on the velocity itself, okay? So think about that. The rate at which velocity changes actually depends on how fast the object is already moving. That's kind of tricky, and we can't solve this using just simple polynomial integrals because we can't integrate velocity because this is not a constant, okay? And so what happens is we have to solve this using a tool called a differential equation, and the way that we solve it, so on the AP test, you're going to see situations where it asks you to set up a differential equation. And here we have set up a differential equation where we're trying to find velocity, or we have, we're showing that the change of velocity is dependent on the velocity itself. So the way that we solve this, though, is our goal is to get all the t's on one side and the v's on the other side. So dv equals g minus bv sorry, B over MV <coughs> times V, and now times DT. But we got to get the V over to the side, so we have to divide this whole piece. So DV over negative, or sorry, G minus BV over M equals DT. Now to solve from here, we're going to integrate. We're going to integrate this one from 0 to T. And we're going to integrate this one from our starting velocity v naught to our current velocity v. 
Okay, now the right side is going to be simple. The integral of dt with respect to t is just t. Okay, this side a little trickier. We have to think about this. We have several constants here. Integral of 1 over v <coughs> is equal to ln of v. Okay, and so the derivative or the integral of 1 over g minus bv over m would be equal to negative m over b times ln of negative, or sorry, of um, g minus b v over m. Okay, and now we have to evaluate this for v naught and for v. And so we have it at v. We're going to subtract from this what this would be at v naught. And so we'll put that in the parentheses here, ln g minus b v naught over m. Okay, and then all of this would be equal to t. Okay, so we're going to take this piece and continue with it on the next frame. Okay, so now we need to simplify this big mess of things that we have. So I'm going to multiply negative b over m to both sides. And I'm going to combine these. Remember that if you have a subtraction with a, log, a logarithm, you can divide them. So ln of g minus bv over m over g minus bv naught over m, okay, would be equal to negative b over m t. Okay, now from here to continue solving, I could raise both of these as powers of e to get rid of the ln. So I get g minus bv over m over g minus bv naught over m equals e to the negative b over m times t. Okay, then I'll multiply this piece right here to the other side so that I get g minus bv over m equals g minus b v naught over m times e to the negative b over m to t okay or times t and then we can subtract g from both sides and get negative b v over m equals g minus b v naught over m e to the negative b over m times t minus g and then finally multiply everything by negative b over or by positive sorry yeah negative m over b okay and so v is equal to um, negative m over b g plus v naught times e to the negative b over m times t plus g times m over b. Okay, so from here, we have this function for velocity, and it's a little bit of a mess, but let's try to interpret a little bit. Okay, when t is equal to 0, then this whole term is equal to 1, which means we have this plus that plus this, or velocity is equal to our initial velocity. Okay, as this increases, okay, it gets closer and closer to 0, okay, and as it gets closer and closer to 0, we end up with this. So when t is really, really big, this whole term right here goes away. You might remember this from before was our what we said the terminal velocity was equal to. And so we end up with that terminal velocity at the end. Okay, now the last thing we might want to do here is to write an equation for the acceleration with respect to time. And to find acceleration, 
that we find dv dt. So we're going to actually integrate this now with respect to time. I mean, find the derivative with respect to time. So that would be the derivative of negative m over bg plus v naught e to the negative v over mt. So when we take a derivative of this, remember the derivative of this is the same, and then we we'll multiply by this piece in the front. So we get negative v over m times negative m over b g plus v naught e to the negative b over m t. And then when we take the derivative of this, since there's no t value, this is going to go to zero. And so this represents our equation for acceleration. We can simplify it by distributing that b over m. And so we get a is equal to, these are just going to turn into g minus b over m, or sorry, b over m times v naught times e to the negative b over m times t. Okay, and so remember, when t is equal to 0, then this is equal to 1, and so g is going to be equal to whatever this initial velocity is, possibly 0, and so when v naught is 0, we get just get g, and um, for when t is also 0, and as t increases, and v increases, then this term right here, gets closer and closer to um, zero because as the speed gets to a certain point then it stops accelerating okay so if we were to graph the velocity the velocity with respect to time looks something like this and there would be an asymptote right here for terminal velocity which was g m over b and if we graph acceleration it's going to look like this and it's going to approach zero when our starting value here is g